and we're going to jump straight in with the lining. So first things first is the zipper pocket. Now with this line, you want the lining piece that is a full. So the zip, the card slots has two parts of the lining and the zipper pocket has this one full piece. So this is the one you want. And then you've also got your inside zipper pocket pieces. Now, depending on what you use for your accent, you may have one of each. You may have chosen to use two of lining. Either way, absolutely fine. What we're going to do is make sure that it's the right way up. I think mine's that way. And then flip them over so that they're still the images are still the right way up. From the bottom edge, measure up three quarters of an inch. This will help um, us get a nice fold to work with on our turning gap. So do that on both. And then all we're going to do is take the bottom more edge up to meet this line that we've drawn on and give it a press. Do that for both of them. There we go. So I've got these folded edges at the bottom. Now, if you've got two the same, pick any one. Otherwise, pick the one that is made with the same material as a lining fabric. I'm going to flip this over. We need to draw a box on now for our um, zipper. Now this is the easiest way I do it. So I'm just measuring down three quarters of an inch from the top. And then I'm going to measure three eighths below that. And then measure in three quarters of an inch from both sides. And that way, no matter which, if you accidentally miscut this, you've still got a lovely, perfectly central box. It's all good. Now, take your lining right side up, bring this measurement back. So we need to lay the pocket so it is two inches down and central. I'm using my quilting ruler two inches down and I'm also using the lines in, in line with the top edges. So I know that this line here is the centre. And then when I place this on here, boop, like that, I know that I'm central. If you don't have a quilting ruler, what you can do is fold this piece, fold this piece, and then match up the folded lines. And then just position it two inches down. So either way, you do whatever works for you. Fingers. And I'm going to sew these together on top of the rectangle shape. So if you copied it like mine, don't sew these bits. Don't worry about those. They'll disappear with the heat. So we're just going to sew this rectangle. So use a regular stitch length and sew on top of the line. There we go. 
Now in your instructions, you will see there is a step on the box inside this oh, sorry I say the inside of the box so I'm just drawing my free hand but the doodle looks like that so it's a rough half inch maybe in and you draw a line between the two points and then you extend so that one runs central and this one ends up being like a triangle it doesn't have to be perfect we're not looking for perfect we're just looking for an even amount left over when we when we cut i'm just folding mine to make the first snip I'm going to cut along these lines and then into the corners. Go as close as you want, but don't snip the stitches. Obviously, the closer you get, the crisper your corners will be. And if you do end up snipping them, don't panic, just sew over them again. Now we'll do a little posting. I'm going to post this through here. So what I like to do is just press these edges in. And then you can post this through here. Roll all the seams between your fingers. And then give it all another good press. The, way, the reason I like to use the lining on this side is that if you don't get those perfectly crisp corners and you end up seeing a bit of this, this pocket piece, it's the same colour so it doesn't stand out like a sore thumb. If you're using a different colour, it's going to stand out. So blend it in. So go away, give all that a little press and then we'll come back. There we go. So it's all pressed and it's looking lovely jubbly, nice and crisp lines. And we can add our zipper. So your zipper will go like that with a pull on the left. That's kind of a standard way, but if you are left-handed, you might want the pull to be on the other side. But the beauty about this bag is you can sew it with a pull on the left because there is no real front or back. It doesn't matter, you just wear it around the other way and it's all good. So, if you need to, you can add some double sided tape along the long edges of here before you stick your zip down. Or you can use glue or pins. What we're going to do is make sure that this is central and the pull is within the box. We are going to top stitch all around the outside. If you need to, you can swap to a zipper foot. I've put a narrow foot on mine, ready for this part. So, top stitch around the outside. Go, just cut the tails off and any excess you don't need to just tidy it up but if you want to add a bit of fray stop especially if you're using zipper tape you can add some fray check on the ends to stop it fraying I should have just left that really but there you go so zipper is in 
And on the reverse, we're going to take our remaining piece. Make sure the folded edge is at the bottom. And we're going to match these up. And clip them together. So if you are using pins, just make sure that you're not pinning through the lining as well. So I'm going to sew up across and down but I'm actually going to do it from this way and I always do it this way so that I know that I am keeping my lining well out of the way. Now seam allowance here is is not a specific measurement if you've got a narrow foot on stick to your narrow foot if you want to do three quarters uh, don't do three quarters three eighths absolutely fine a quarter inch absolutely fine it doesn't matter really on this what seam allowance you do i'm just going to swap back to my normal foot there we go sew these together leave this open for turning And there we have it. So we've got our turning gap here. Important thing, we're going to open our zip ready. It's open, it's done. So that we can turn our bag through this when we finish. So that is one side of the lining complete. We can move on to the card slots. Now, to make this easier for me, I have pre folded mine. Pre folded, pre folded pressed but just imagine this is lovely and flat so you will need your pattern piece for this and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to write that this is the top edge and i'm doing all these marks on the wrong side so you can lay them next to each other or put this one on top whichever Whichever way works, and just mark. I'm even going to put the numbers two, three. I like to put the numbers so that I know that when I'm constructing, I don't miss out anything because it's very easy to fold one and then accidentally miss one and then fold another, and then your card slots are off. But there we are. So these are our card slots. What I'm also done is right. So I've got my scissors here, and then on each mark, I'm just making a tiny little snip. I'm not going to pretend to do it because I have already pre-snipped. But they are just a little a bit bigger than an eighth. But not all the way. They're just little snips. And what these do is they help us line up the folds. So take number one. And we're going to fold the top down. Now this is completely backwards to any card slots you might have done. Because we're doing it a different way. So you need to think of that. Don't don't think of what you know. This is different. So take one and fold it down. So at one we're going to fold. And then what you can do is where you've made the cuts, and you just roll it slightly until the edges meet up. And then give it a press. And this really helps to get a nice straight line. And then if I flip this over... At fold number two, we're going to bring the bottom up. Bottoms up. 
and then we can do our concertina now. So at number th at four, three, down, four, four, up, and then just keep on going five, six, seven, and then give it all a real good press. So I've given this a real good steam press to set it. That is what it should look like, okay? Now, don't worry if this looks completely wrong to anything you've done. Don't panic. Right. Final step before we fix these on, on, on. I've just flipped over my card slots. So this edge you might have already labelled that it's the bottom edge. All I'm going to do is measure up three quarters of an inch and mark across. Draw a nice line across. And like we did with the uh, zipper pocket, we're just going to bring that bottom edge up and press bottom all edge up and press it there we have it so you've got your big fold edge at the top and a small fold edge at the bottom okay so that is still the top still the bottom so grab your card slot back piece and you want to, let me just get my cutting mat, hang on. So you can easily see what I'm doing then. So I'm going to lay this on here so that it's level with one of the lines. My other cutting mat would be better because it's got half inch markers and this one hasn't. But measure down four inches, one, two, three, four, which is here. Use a ruler if you want to. And take your card slots. They are the right way up at the minute. And I'm going to flip them over and pull this top fold down. So it still says top. And measure it up, line it up with the four inch markers that you've made. I'll line these up. That one and that one there. And then we can sew across the bottom using a three eighth inch seam allowance to seal this card slot. So refold all of these you can you also use your cutting mat if you want just to make sure that this bottom one is nice and level like that And then I can top stitch the bottom of this fold. It's hard to see in this fabric. I'm going to top stitch across here to hold this one in place. There we go. So all we need to do now is just Make sure that your card slots are all lovely and level. And base stitch down the sides. So once you're happy with the way they are, 
pin them and clip them if needs be and baste at the sides within the seam allowance. Like that. And hopefully they won't shift around too much. There are only base stitches, so if anything moves, just unpick them quickly and redo them. No trouble with that. So once your card slots are in place, just make sure that you're keeping them the right way up. And you can take your lining pieces, your card slot pieces. So we've got a left one and a right one. Now, right one goes on, flip it on and matches up with the right side edge. And then we just sew down here using a regular seam allowance. And once that's done, press it open. You want all of the seam allowances to be facing the outside. You don't want to be folding all of those back on themselves. So give that a press if needed. Like that. And top stitch. Like that and then we're just going to do the opposite on this way so take your left one flip it on match it up with the left side seam allowance press top stitch okay do that one There we go, and that is your card slot lining ready. Let's have a little check. This is a loyalty card. Beautiful. Now, what I'm going to do is I've just got my zipper pocket lining piece, and I'm just going to lay one on top of the other because sometimes something funny happens you know if your seams aren't exactly right don't worry it happens this will be slightly different size so just make sure that they are the same all is good and most importantly zipper open okay so we can actually go ahead and put these together now So exactly the same as we did in the outer, or with the outer. I'm not entirely sure why my bottom edge is slightly longer. Yeah, cut that with my eyes closed then. But and then using seam allowance now, I'm gonna sew down the sides and across the bottom. Don't worry about grading, you don't have to grade anything. Not with my patterns, because I don't like it. So just regular seam allowance and we're all good. Ooh, nearly. So again, I am cutting the seam allowances take more care than I did and 
and then again I've just left the top bit so that I can open the seam. So, same again, if you put your hand inside it's easy to pinch these. Now with the linings you can open the seam allowances if you want but honestly it doesn't make a bit of difference. With the outer being thicker it sits nicer but with the box corners it honestly doesn't make a bit of difference if one's facing one way and one's facing another way. But try and match them up as best you can, the seams and then sew across using seam allowance. And all I'm going to do again is just cut off the excess. And that is our, our line. Wow, our line is done already. Sometimes I shock myself because I think, oh, okay, surely there was more steps to that. But no. So again, last chance saloon. Is your pocket open? Turn the lining inside out. Now there are many ways of putting this bag together, but because we have a smaller lining than the outer, it is tricky to do it other ways that you might be used to. Hang on. Right, I lost my bag for a second. It was camouflaged. So, I've got my outer. And I've got my lining. And what I'm going to do is, if I have the bag, so that, I'm looking at this back side here. This sticky up bit is on the right, and the pull is over on the left. I'm going to place my lining inside so that the zipper pocket is touching this side. This way, both zips will open the same way. It's not necessary, but it is a nice little touch to open the zip and the lining zip the same direction. It's just a nice little added, you know, bit of care. So again, zippy up bit. Zippy down bit, place this inside. You want it to go in between. There's a lot of layers in here. Try and get it in the middle if you can. Tuck it right in there. So hang on, I need to move my camera a second. There we go, I just needed a bit more height. So Pull the lining out so that if we start on these zippy up bits, is what we're now calling them. I've got this outer seam and I'm opening it and I've got my lining seam which I'm opening the seam allowances and then I'm matching them up like so. With the zippy down bit what I'm just doing is making sure that they are pointing down evenly. So you might need to just work it to see which way the zip goes around best for you. But you want it to be kind of smooth. So something like that, which is hard for you to see, I understand. I do appreciate that. We don't want any major folds, like you don't want it to point right down because that will create a fold and you won't be able to undo zip. So try and just smooth it. When we come to putting our clips in, you can smooth it out a bit more, it's fine.
just have that feel wiggle it around make sure it's not folded There we go. And then we're going to sew all the way around the top using a regular seam allowance. You may need to change to your zipper foot for this. So I'm going to switch back over to my narrow foot. And do it whichever way your machine allows so you might have a removable bed or you may have to do it from the inside which is what i have to do my lining is playing silly games So obviously if you found that you've used a number three zipper because you didn't have a number five that's absolutely fine but make sure you sew this bit using a quarter inch seam allowance okay but as we've got number five we're going to do this with a regular three eight nearly there nearly there so locate your pocket I'm gonna pull the bag through so if you find a bottom corner you'll know that you're not pulling it through from the inside of one of the pockets because if you try and do that it just makes everything a bit more complicated so push in your corner and I pull the corner through. Just like so. And push out your corners from the inside. close up my turning gap so we've got these lovely folded edges it just makes it easier because you match folded edge up to folded edge throw a couple of clips about and then you can edge stitch across top stitch edge stitch however close you feel comfortable with but using a regular similar stitch there. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. Just tidy up the ends. And then you can pop your pocket back inside the lining and then push it all down inside the bag. Don't worry, we'll tidy that up after. Oh, 
couple of rogue threads. I never know where they come from because I always cut them off. Now, roll the lining and the outer until the zipper sticks straight up because you'll know if it's if it's off. You should be able to feel as it looks even. And I'm just adding some clips just to keep it there while I, before I sew it. Another one. Don't want that to get caught in your zip. So, a couple of ways to sew this now. Just push my lining right down. So, if you've got a removable flatbed, you can easily pop this on the end. You can sew from the inside here, you can turn it inside out if you want to sew from the inside of the bag but looking at the outer, if that makes sense. I do neither of those things and I sew mine completely awkward way, as is typical. What I do is I actually sew mine like that, so almost upside down. So that I don't have to turn it inside out, but I'm still looking at the outer because the outer is the neat line I want. There's nothing worse than sewing the lining and then the outer's all funny. So I kind of sew mine upside down like this. But I might take a second, so what I'll do is I'll just pause and cut that bit. But make sure that when it comes to here you lift your zipper up out of the way okay the top stitching all the way around there we go so nicely top stitched just check that your zipper can close quite happily. I don't know if you can see these, but I did manage to get little folds at the end of my zips, but it's not a problem. They're only minute. My zipper still opens and closes perfectly fine. So, but as you can see, when we had that bagginess on the outer, it's gone now. It's just looking like that because the bag is empty. But when you fill this bag up, the bag takes up space in the outer pocket. So it's all good. And there's still room to put stuff in. All good. Method in my madness. So, final steps. Final steps. Take your strap. A lovely bag strap that we obviously made first. And you want to get one of your sliders. Now normally I would use one of the wide mouth sliders which are angled for the faux leather. But I haven't got any left and luckily for me this faux leather is quite thick. But if you are using a thick faux leather or cork, I would recommend one of these style ones. You can see there is a huge difference. This gap is much bigger to accommodate the thicker fabrics. And that angles nicely for the thick, the, the bend in the fabric as well. So I do recommend 
searching out for some of these wide mouth sliders. But I digress. Have a look at the ends of your strap. Sometimes you get one that looks nicer than the other. Sometimes they're both magically perfect. It happens. Sometimes one does funny business. We don't know what goes on. That one, funny business, is going to go hidden away where your slider is. So we're going to fold it round the bar. Like so. You fold it by two and a half inches. This gives a real nice big fold to sew with. If you are using a rivet, you might not need to fold it as much. It's completely what you feel comfortable with. I'm just using a generic, generic. But measure up and mark the five inches. And you can slide this on. Fold it around the inside bar and bring your end to meet that five inches there. Have a look in the instructions. You can either sew a box with a cross, X in the middle, or you can add a rivet. I'm going to add a rivet, I think. So for now, I'm just going to clip that in place. Now decide how you want to wear your bag. So I'm going to wear mine on my right side. So this bit is a bit I want on show. So this bit is probably going to be the part where I have my adjuster. I mean it's it's total preference really. Some people like seeing the adjusters, some people don't. You might want it as a feature. But either way, I've got my folded edge that I can see here. And I'm going to run this down through. So you see there. I've gone kind of inside out, I've got the folded edge and then I could take my strap end here and weave it up through. Just make sure that there are no twists. So it looks like so. Like I said, some people like that on show, some people don't. It's completely up to you, but look at how you're going to wear it as to how you're going to weave the strap through. Right, next part, make sure that there are no twists. And this time we're going to go from outside in. So we're going to go from the outside and fold it up inwards. Now again, if you were using a river, you might not need a big, big fold. I like two rivets on this bit. So I'm going to adjust mine nicely. You might want to measure up again the five inches and fold just so that these two are even. But my theory is that you never see the two at the same time anyways. So if you want just one rivet up there and two decorative ones here, go for it. Or you can sew that lovely box that we saw like so and then final step which in the instructions was many many steps ago what i'm going to do with my zipper end is fold the tape so that it fits inside my zipper end I've got these real narrow ones, so sometimes I've got to fold it twice. 
feel free to add glue to keep it in there if you don't have any of these go to the guides section a guide to and there is a guide to sewing on a fabric um, zipper end handy little guide for you you will need one of these for this zipper end to make a pilot hole please watch your fingers but it's very hard for the tiny screws to go through the teeth so you need to make a pilot hole once you've done that you can quite happily screw it in place and that is that once I've done my rivets That is Rendezvous with our card slots and zipper and two very roomy outside pockets. There we go. Ta-da! Any questions, anything you want to say, please pop it in the comments or email me if you want to ask something. Come on over to the Facebook group. Have a see what the testers have made too. There's some absolutely fabulous ones. But I've got a couple more of these I'll be making too. There we go. Ta-da! Thanks for watching.